welcome, welcome one and all, step right up and get your tickets for another moment in gaming history. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, or if you're new here, welcome officially to the channel. This is a series where I go into various different moments in video game history, and today I want to talk about something that really doesn't happen much in video games, and is always kind of a unique experience when it does happen. And that's times where you get to play the villain. These days, we have more games than ever that allow you to indulge in playing the bad guy, either through choices like Mass Effect or just straight up start out as the bad guy in games like Overlord. But when did this first happen? What was that game like? Well, let's take a look at some of the earliest games where you could play the villain and maybe you guys can help me decide which one it is or maybe even find a new one that I didn't know about. Now, this one, from what I can tell, is up for a bit of debate. Um, it was a little hard to track down because people tend to want to look at popular villains, not necessarily times you play the villain. So, the earliest ones I could find came out in either 1982 or 1983, and one of the others is decidedly 1983. So, you know what, let's cover both games kind of like what we did last time. And just go on to these two, because these are two of the earliest games I could find that you could play the villain, because why not, right? So, first up in our candidates, and most likely, is Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now, we've talked about this game a little bit on the channel before, but this game caused more than a bit of a stir when it came out. Based loosely off the movie that came out in 1974, the player takes the role not only of one of the victims trying to escape the chainsaw building killer, but the killer himself, Leatherface. Yep, you heard me, it's your job to show those people who's boss by giving them a chainsaw to the face. The gameplay is pretty simple, consisting of you, the villain, chasing girls on the screen with the intent of taking the chainsaw to them. The catch is, you're running on limited fuel. The more you rev your chainsaw or use it to clear obstacles in your path, the closer you are to seeing a game over screen. Every five victims you take down restores a bit of fuel in your chainsaw, and the goal is pretty simple. Get the high score. That's it. Yep, much like a lot of earlier Atari games, the only real focus on this was how good a score you could get before you inevitably ran out of fuel. Once you did, one of the victims finally fights back, literally come up and coming up and kicking Leatherface in the butt. Uh, this is kind of a controversial game for the time, with many retailers hiding it behind the counter and considering it too violent for the time and was one of the last games made by Wizard Video Games who closed down after this title failed to perform. It pretty much sold pretty poorly and now has gone down as one of the most rare Atari cartridges in existence. The next game that comes up as I started digging into this comes from a publisher called iMagic who made a game called Dracula for the Intellivision. And this is the main reason I think this topic is in question outside of ones I may not know about, because this was either published in 1982 or June of 1983, which would make it potentially the second time anyone had a chance to play the villain in a video game, and honestly, it's likely the first many of you ever had to play the villain due to how few copies of Texas Chainsaw Massacre were ever out in the wild. In this game you play as well, Dracula. And your objective is simple, if a bit more complex, than Texas Chainsaw and the fact that you're tasked with binding a number of people per night. It's just a scratch. Some will be on the open, and some you'll have to scare out of their homes by knocking politely on the door. Once you've hit your quota for the night, you need to head back to the cemetery and rest during the day. If you're caught during the day, you will die. I mean, you're Dracula after all. To help you make it through the stages faster, you can turn into a bat, but during this time you'll have to watch out for the vulture who can carry you off and you'll die. Yeah, don't ask me to explain that one, that makes a lot less sense. Speaking of animals, you'll also need to watch out for a white wolf who will bite you on your way back to your coffin. Each time he bites you, it'll stun you, which is problematic when you're racing against sunrise, as you would imagine. As for influence, I'd have to say it's a good start. It opened people's eyes to the idea and fun you can have playing the bad guy instead of being roped into being the good guy all the time. In this way, we opened up to playing characters like M. Bison, villains in GTA, and even Kane in the Soul Reaver series. 
There's absolutely no denying the allure of a good bad guy, and sometimes it's even more fun to play the bad guy yourself. However, what do you guys think of this one? Which do you think was first? Did you ever play either one of them, and if so, what did you think of them? Is there another one I happen to miss that needs to be on this as part of this discussion? Let me know in the comments. However, for now, thank you so much for watching. If I could ask you for one last favor, please leave this video a like. And if you haven't, consider subscribing, it really helps me out a ton. For now though, thank you once again, and until next time, happy gaming.